Hey everyone, Christmas is coming soon, and hundreds of millions around the world are excited for the holiday. If you love video games, chances are you love Christmas, and Christmas video games are truly some of the most special games there are. So in this video I'm going to be covering how developers celebrate Christmas in their video games. If you watch a lot of Sonic content on the site, it's likely that you know this video is inspired by a video by the game apologist, named How Sega Celebrates Christmas. I'll link it in the description in the pinned comment, go watch it after this, it's a great video. But let's stop the hold up and get into the video. I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and I hope you enjoy the video. Memorable games that nobody knows. We all remember at least one of these. Zombie Cubes, James Bond codenamed Robocard, and Zombie Tsunami are some of my childhood games you remember. Days Before Christmas wasn't in my childhood, but I imagine if it weren't, it'd fit right into that category. Days Before Christmas is a game with many merits, despite being a basic platformer. The game is very thematic, with mostly everything being festive themed. It does take creative liberties from time to time, but generally, it stays as festive as ever. The game overall looks very good, especially for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, which usually doesn't look as good as this. The snow effects especially look impressive for the console it was released on. I'd say that on average, Sega Genesis games usually look better than Super Nintendo games, and despite this game being released exclusively on Super Nintendo, its graphical fidelity is on the same level as a select few Genesis games. The presentation as a whole is just very nice. The level select screen looks like an app in Canada, the title cards have these nice expressive, almost cartoon-like artworks. The main theme of the game is jingle bells. Every few levels you play a level where you drop presents into chimneys and generally the thematicness of this game seems to like it was deliberately made clever and consistent rather than being lazy as the new Super Mario Bros games or Sonic 4 Episode 1 and 2. The game obviously doesn't hold up super well in the gameplay department but I had a decent time with it. If I was a kid growing up in the 90s and I got this for Christmas I would have loved it. Some of my favourite things in video games are things like the festive mood of Christmas that we all love. And in its entirety, Days Before Christmas fits that mold. This game may not be perfect but the developers tried their damn best and I appreciate that and the game as a whole all the same. This game may not be the best but it's a game I won't be forgetting anytime soon. Golden X, Streets of Rage, Castle Crashes, Scott Pilgrim vs the World. These are some of the most iconic games of the beam up genre and they are certainly some of the best. But if we were to flip that prompt on its head and try and find the worst beat em up games, Batman Returns, a licensed beat em up game set on Christmas Day, fits that to a T. This game isn't horrendous by any means, but what it is, is a bore. But let's just look past that and focus on Christmas. This game doesn't represent the holiday super well, let alone as much as the game I just covered, Days Before Christmas, but a thing it has in common with Days Before Christmas is that it looks amazing. The charm of it all certainly doesn't reach the heights of the previously discussed, but in general, Batman Returns looks far better, with the former already looking nice. It's very consistent, though the animations on Catwoman look pretty silly and out of place, but my point of the game's presentation still stands. The game may have had a lot of effort put into it, but when Gotham reaches Christmas once more, it won't be a city for me to save. The Escapist is one of the best games that I always forget about. By no means is it a 10 out of 10, but it's easily one of the most forgettable, yet good games I've played. More of this game would be great. That's why I appreciate the Santa Sweatshop DLC. Everything about this DLC, other than the gameplay itself, seems like it was deliberately made as charming as possible. Everyone being elves, cleaning up deer manure for money, the snow covering the prison grounds, and simply playing the game. The music is either your usual Escapist music, the music is infectiously festive and sometimes it's a bit of a mix of both but what stays consistent with the music is that it's all great just like this DLC and just like this game So next, I'm going to cover a very special little game, but before I cover that, I'm going to cover a few smaller games and secrets in games. Lightning Round! In Donkey Kong Country 3, if you press L R R L R R L R L R 
on the save select screen and then type the code Mary and enter a bonus game. The stars will be replaced with ornaments and the music will become festive themed. In Clay Fighter 63 and the third, one of the playable characters is Bad Mr. Frosty, who is also in the box art. Home Alone is a licensed game based on the movie of the same name, which is the most popular Christmas movie released. Elf Bowling is a Christmas game where you bowl over elves at Santa and it's one of the worst and most pointless games of all time. The in-game town of Yokosuka and Shenmue changes to a Christmas version at some point in the game and it's one of the best Christmas events I've seen in a game. But that's it for the lightning round. And now, we're going to talk about the final game of this video. If you spent time on a web browser in school, most likely you played a lot of games with Adobe Flash Player. Balloon City 5, Age of War, Run 3, and Interactive Buddy are just a few worth mentioning. And a specific Flash game that revolves around the holidays just happened to be sponsored by the biggest, or at the very least, most iconic gaming company of all time, Nintendo. The Pixel in Action, Mission in Snowdrift Land was a Flash game only available in the year of 2006 specifically December 1st to January 14th. The game worked like an actual advent calendar. There'd be this nice little bite-sized platforming challenge every afternoon for you to try up until December 24th when the game stopped adding new levels and January 14th when the game was shut down. The game returned in December 2010, but once again, it shut down. And ever since that day up until 2018, the game had been completely lost. That was until, on the website spritersresource.com, every single asset for Mission and Snowdrift Land had been uploaded without many realizing. In the comment section, a user going by the name Freezer asked the original poster where the assets were ripped from. They responded saying that it's still available on the developer's website. All this time, the game had still been available. One issue, the game requires internet and therefore is unarchivable. But in an amazing turn of events, the developers had announced a complete HD 60fps remaster of the game, and it released on December 1st, 2021. The game is 995 on Steam right now, and it's a good time. There isn't much more to talk about relating to the game itself and the Christmas representation. It's a pretty silent game in terms of the Christmas theming, but the fact that this lovely little Nintendo Flash game got preserved after 15 years of being lost without an archive, well, it just goes to show how dedicated some are. And the dedication certainly doesn't go unnoticed. Christmas is celebrated throughout the world. It's a wonderful time of giving and fun. And video games are my favorite thing ever. So to have games that revolve around Christmas, or even just Christmas events in video games, essentially combining Christmas and my favorite pastime into one, brings me joy. These games may be of varying quality, but they all have consistent passion behind the development. This has been Wario Enthusiast, and I hope you have a lovely Christmas.